Are you ready to increase your daily RODI water production while also reducing wastewater? Today we'll show you how. Hi guys, I'm Randy, and today on BRS TV How To, we're showing you the three simple steps that we use to install the BRS 150 gallon per day water saver upgrade kit. Many reefers, including myself, struggle with how long it takes to make RODI water. Not only that, but with a three or four to one wastewater to product water ratio from a standard 75 gallon per day membrane, some reefers are worried with how much wastewater is going down the drain. This is where installing a 150 gallon per day water saver upgrade kit can speed up RODI water production as well as cut the wastewater in half. We'll be installing our upgrade kit in series, which is also known as wastewater staging. Basically what that means is that we'll feed the new membrane with the wastewater from the existing membrane. In short, installing them in series allows for the source water to be recycled and filtered again. Not only does this reduce the amount of wastewater you create, but also doubles the amount of good product water you're making. In order to install the 150 gallon per day upgrade kit on your existing system, all you need is the kit itself. It will include a 75 gallon per day membrane, membrane housing, clips for mounting, additional polyethylene RO tubing, and a fitting that combines two water lines together. There are some additional tools that I find to be very helpful in making this process go smoothly and quickly, like a small crescent wrench and a pair of tube cutters. If you don't have a pair of tube cutters, you can use a sharp knife or a razor blade as well. One last thing to mention for installation requirements, the 150 gallon per day water saver upgrade kit requires a minimum of 65 PSI water pressure. Each individual home is going to be different in the amount of pressure within the water lines, so it may be a good idea to check your specific pressure to make sure it will meet the needs of the upgrade kit and the RODI unit. To get started on today's install, we first need to prep the existing RO membrane. With the source water off, I'll disconnect the black wastewater line along with the flow restrictor from the membrane housing. I will also disconnect the blue product water line from the auto shutoff valve. Sometimes removing these RO tubes from their push connect fittings can be pretty tough to do with just your hand, and that's why I use a small crescent wrench to help hold the fitting back while I pull out the tube. With the included black tubing, I'll need to cut a small section about 14 inches long and insert it into the wastewater fitting on the housing. After that, I'm ready for step two. With the plumbing prepped on the existing membrane, I can now assemble the new RO membrane and housing. When putting the membrane into the housing, be sure to really push down firmly in order to seat the membrane as far as possible. This will help to avoid chances of high TDS water getting into your good product water from a bad seal. Now that the membrane is firmly seated and the caps back on, I can clip the new membrane on top of the existing one with the provided clips. After that, I just need to insert the tubes into their proper fittings. I'll take the black wastewater line from the membrane below and connect it to the push connect fitting on the cap of the new membrane. With the black wastewater line and flow restrictor I removed earlier, I can insert it into the top push connect fitting. And that takes care of the two black wastewater lines. All that's left is to tie the two blue product water lines together with the included Y fitting and run them to the auto shutoff valve. You will have to cut a couple small sections of blue product water tubing, but you can see what the final product should look like. There are some common challenges that may arise from installing the 150 gallon per day upgrade kit, but here are some tips to help you troubleshoot them before they become an issue. When installing the membrane into the housing, it's very important that the membrane is seated as far as it'll go. If the membrane isn't fully seated, it could allow for high TDS to bypass the filter and travel through to your DI resin. This would show up as higher than normal TDS registering on the TDS meter, as well as faster DI consumption. We color code all of our tubing lines to help avoid confusion while plumbing. I know for me, I was still a bit confused when I installed this kit on my first RODI unit, but I found that a couple quick photos of the plumbing lines really helped me to keep it all straight. We often get asked about our suggestion of a minimum water pressure at 65 PSI, Although each membrane is rated at 50 PSI, we recommend a slightly higher water pressure to account for the membranes plumbed in series and to overcome possible decreased performance from operating at lower pressures. Lastly, with both membranes producing about a 98% rejection rate, you'll have slightly higher TDS left over before the DI resin stages because the wastewater from one is feeding the second. If you have dirtier water, like over 300 TDS, this effect may be even higher and you could see faster than normal DI consumption. If you don't have a TDS meter installed on your unit, they are available and are super easy to install yourself. 
They can really provide you with a more accurate look at how your membranes are performing to be sure you are getting the best filtration possible. Along with that, having a pressure gauge on your RODI unit can not only help to ensure that you have adequate pressure to effectively run the system, but also serves as an indicator when it's time to change out other pre-filters. Let's talk about maintaining your 150 gallon per day water saver upgrade kit to make sure that you're always getting the best performance from your unit. Depending on the chemical makeup of your specific tap water, these RO membranes can typically last up to two or three years before needing to be replaced. If you have higher TDS in your water or elevated contaminants, this filter life could potentially be lower. One key component to keeping your RO membranes lasting is to make sure you're replacing the pre-filters before they become exhausted. Changing the carbon blocks before they're exhausted can help save your RO membrane from being oxidized or ruined from remaining disinfectants and chlorine. Well guys, that wraps up today's install. If you have any more questions, please don't keep them to yourself because that's what this team of reefers lives for. Give us a quick call or email and if you need your answer in the next 60 seconds, hit us up with a chat. See you in the next episode of BRS TV.